spooky sticks, twisty, gnarly, and very, very knobbly. Are you brave enough to make them in Blender? A curve to stick geometry node group that takes a simple curve and adds all the gnarly details that have made sticks so beloved by so many for centuries. You can utilize this node group to make individual sticks or, to use the collective noun, forests. So let's make it. I'm going to go fast on this one because, let's face it, who wants to spend more than 15 minutes on a stick? But scream if you want to go faster, as the scary man at the fun fair used to say. First, let's kill the cube. Then, we're going to add two curves. A bezier curve, to control the shape of our stick, and a curved circle, which we are going to use for the stick's profile. With the circle, we want to give it an interesting shape, so when it twists down the line of the stick, it looks really cool. Now I'm selecting our Bezier curve, and adding a Geometry Nodes modifier to it. And so it begins, another node wrestling exercise. Thanks to those geniuses at Blender, I can simply drag the curve circle into the Bezier's geometry node group, reshaping our curve to make best use of the space available. Adding a curve to mesh node and plugging our funky circle in as the profile. Then adding a set radius node and plugging in the spline parameter factor. I'm going to add a float curve to give us better control over the shape. My curve is the wrong way round. I like things to be the right way round, so I've added a reverse curve node before adjusting the float curve to be a bit more organic. A math multiply node lets us scale the radius. Remember I made a fuss about the circle having to be interesting. Well, I'm adding a curve tilt node to show you why. Using the spline parameter factor again, I'm multiplying it with a random value. This creates a randomized twist down the length of the stick, which we can see because our profile circle is so funky. Next up, let's bunch. A resample curve node allows us to set the number of segments in the stick. You could define the segments by length, but I didn't want to. I'm adding instances onto our curve so we can better see what's about to happen here. And I'm deliberately not zooming in so we can't. I'm adding an Align Euler to Vector node because I finally worked out how to use it and now I just can't help myself. All our points are an equal distance from each other, but we want to bunch them so the longest is at the base and the shortest at the very end. I'm going to do this by sampling positions on the curve with the factor and manipulating the factor with a float curve. Ta-da! It's a very neat trick, and if there was anyone in my life, I think they would be really impressed by it. Next, we're going to randomize this bunching, the way that nature would want it. Though if it really was the way nature wanted it, it would eat you if you didn't run fast enough. A math multiply node and a random value node. This way, we can randomize the result to be a little bit less or a little bit more. I want more random in the longer segments and less random in the shorter ones. We can do this by mixing with our original factor, which gives us this random at the base no random at the very tip. I'm throttling the factor with a map range node, so the tip gets a little bit of random and doesn't feel left out. And finally for bunching, let's mix it with the original factor so we can dial it in and out. If you get too scared staring at the stick, just look at a pencil 
and remind yourself that we won. I'm adding a set position node after the bunch and adding the curve from our bunch into the group output. Plugging normal into the offset, which offsets each point along its normal. Using a vector rotate, we can rotate this. Making the axis tangent, we can rotate each point around its original position. Let's randomize all of this, but we're going to use noise texture rather than random value. That's because the random of noise texture is part of a larger whole. Here, I've multiplied the noise texture by 180. W lets you change the noise texture and therefore the rotations. I'm doing the same for the normal, but this time using the noise texture to scale it, having subtracted 0.5 from the noise so that its output is minus 0.5 to 0.5. A multiply math node gives us a bit more oomph. Now we have the crooks and bends, which are such signature features of the modern stick. Turning off the instances because we don't need them anymore. If I move the curve, you'll see that the noise goes wild. This is because, by default, noise is driven by position. Plugging the index into the noise texture vector input solves that. But we do have to adjust the scale. You can see how the noise texture works harmoniously. The chaos of each point is connected. If random value is alien, noise texture is aliens. Moving the curve now, the noise no longer loses its mind. The advantages in posing something like this are immense. Which leads me to the next thing. I want the ends of the stick to adhere to the ends of the curve. So, I'm going to tell this set position node not to touch them. Two endpoint selections and some booleans. We've come quite far, haven't we? You and I. But what if I was to tell you that the segments of the stick didn't have to be straight? What? Come with me. Don't be afraid. Setting spline type to Bezier and setting the handle type to align before setting the handle type to vector, plugging a random value into the selection. Sweet, sweet variation. We can one up this by scaling the handle positions. Left first. Plug the curve handle position left into position. A vector math node scale. This makes me want to go to a disco. Using random value here, because I want each to be individual. In space, no one can hear you wiggle. Duplicate the whole lot, and switch it to right. I can never quite work out if I prefer auto or a line. So, trust your gut. Make a choice. Let's stop the ends from doing bad things again. And fine tune our random. There's one last geometry thing to do before we hit the land of materials. Radius noise. We are going to resample curve by length and set the curve radius to be the curve radius multiplied by a random value. Can you see the random value problem here? They are all individuals. Plug a noise texture in though. Harmony. Dialing it in. 
and plugging index into the vector to keep things sane. I'm going to start with a new material and rename it just because you're watching. To apply it to the geometry we are creating in our geometry node, I'm adding a set material node and setting it as our material. I'll be using cycles because time means nothing to me. Set an HDRI for the viewport shading. It makes even the worst of us look good. Some might stop at making the stick stick color, but not me. It's not just the shape of a stick that's noisy. It's the texture too. I want it to follow the contour of our wooden weapon. So I'm connecting its UV. But unfortunately, it doesn't appear to have one. But fortunately, I watched a TikTok where some guy used jazz dance moves to explain this method of storing a UV with a named attribute. I want to name it something that I'll never forget. So I'm calling it Kate. Back in the shader shop, we're adding Kate with an attribute node. And there, the noise now follows along the length of the stick. To break it up a bit and make the following down the stick noisy itself, I'm going to make Kate a bit noisy by mixing her with noise, which is ironic because it was my passion for thrash metal which drove her away. I'm using a color ramp to build not just the color, but the specular, the bump, and the displacement. A variety of sticky colors for the color. If you haven't seen one before, I recommend going outside and doing some research. Using value to drive the specular with a roughness of about 0.8. Next up, it's bump time. We want to push the black and the white closer together to give it a bit of crunch. There, it's wobbly and barky. Now, displacement. It's not doing anything. That's because we need to enable displacement in the settings. Gnarly. To add more detail, we need to subdivide the mesh. Don't go too crazy here. Your computer might get locked into a death spiral. If we look at Kate, the UV map we created, we can see that we get this weird bunching that the distribution isn't truly even, which coincidentally is what Kate said about my priorities. Adding a trim curve node to the profile curve fixes this, but it stops us from being able to fill our caps. As a remedy, I'm going to add a taper to our taper, multiplying by the factor then, using a map range node, I'm going to confine the factor. This allows us to replace the cap with a controllable point. You could have someone's eye out with that. And finally, I'm going to mix our bump and displacement noise with a new noise with texture coordinates that are generated, not UV. This gives us our nobbles, our wooden spots and pimples. So there you are, a Geometry Node's spooky stick generator. I hope you sleep well tonight. Remember, it's not the spooky sticks in the forest you have to worry about because the ones trying to get you are the ones under your bed. <laughs>